Gold Fever Adventures. I'm Jack Tucker. Today, we're going to be talking about dry washing. Out here west, dry washers were probably one of the first pieces of prospecting equipment used. They have come a long ways over the course of time, but they basically all do the same thing and pretty well have stayed consistent with a few little changes here and there but let me show you some of the dry so that's washers. what we're going to be doing today we'll run that through there and then i'm going to pan out the material and hopefully i get myself some gold but anyways I want to thank you guys coming along and sharing on these adventures all right today i'm going to be talking about the keen dry washers keen has been around for a very long time it's a trusted name in the mining industry so let's show you about the keen dry a special washer. shout out david hornbrook thanks for your uh, support becoming the newest patreon member okay, here are two different types this is known as a puffer style and this one here is their smaller 140 this has a radial fan in there let me just kind of show you some of this stuff here okay down here see there's a fan down here and what happens with the air comes blown up into this box and it spins this fan and that blows air up onto the tray. Now there is a counterweight right here, and this counterweight was throws it out of balance, and that's what causes the shaking action. So on your riffles, One thing you quickly notice on a dry washer, the riffles are backwards than that on a sluice box because they're designed to come in and capture the heavies in front of the riffles instead of eddying behind it, opposite way. So dry washer riffles are. So opposite. this particular one will run on a leaf blower, and it just blows the air up into the box. Simple as that. And it's got a half inch classifier or screen up on top. So everything smaller than the half inch will fall through down onto the tray and it goes down and then dumps off. And then of course all the gold gets caught behind your riffles or in front of your riffles. Everything larger than a half inch gets left off into your table. Now this pile. style here, this is what they call a puffer style. And this was probably one of the original type styles the old timers so used. So this is, has a bellows on it. And as this goes up and down, as you can see right there, it's going up and down. This canvas, when it goes down, there's flaps underneath here. And when it goes down, it's pushing air up into this canvas box. Then when it goes up, it pushes the air up into this box. So it's kind of constantly puffing, you know, puff, 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 puff. And that puff of air is what's sending this on down thing riffles are the same way they're so backwards. this style uses the air from you know from the bellows that moves it on down the other style has a constant airflow in there the pitch on these are a little more steeper because they can't really get rid of that material it has to be able to puff that on down where that one there you can have that a little more uh, level because it just kind of moves on down but today i'm going to be using the big this. one is the 151 it is a big one they've made a couple changes since then there's another newer model that's out now but this is uh, the one i'm going to be using 151 is a big and it one. uses a motor now this particular motor has hot air induction on it so what it's doing is sucking the hot air off the manifold or the heat off the manifold putting it down into the blower so it blows hot air up into your box kind of helps dry the material out a little bit dry washers have to be pretty dry to run them you can't run it wet through a dry washer like you can through a wet system so the dirt has to be fairly dry to run it through a dry washer and that's why generally you get back there on the east coast you don't see any dry washers because there's too much humidity back there and that humidity tends to make everything wet so dry washers don't work they kind of work great out here on the west coast there's a lot of gold out here in this desert and that's why dry washers work great on your wet systems let's say your riffles go opposite way several different types of wet if you're on doubt on dry washing just grab a hunk of dirt and squeeze it and if it sticks together like that it's probably you can still run this dirt but if it really sticks together it's pretty wet and it's not going to run no we've had rain out here that's almost too wet to run you like it nice and dry. I got me some sand here. It's been classified down, and I'm going to run it. I got all types of piles of dirt right here to run. So let's fire this up and start running this and see if we can't get us some gold. There is a chute down here that you can open and close, and that will determine how much material you're letting down out of your tray. So you don't want to run too much material at the same time. What you basically want to do, see how this is running, you want to be able to see all your riffles. See all your lines or your riffles? 
This is running pretty good right there. These buckets will run pretty fast through here, so I can go through this material. You see, so now I don't see that's flat lining. Too much is coming out of there now. So I've got to stop this from coming out. material twice once it comes over they'll scoop that back up and rerun that again right now see that's running pretty good right there you can see dry washing can be a little bit dusty the drier that material the more air you have through there it's gonna blow even more than that. I just lifted my box up a little bit higher. You can see how it's running good there, but it's not running good here. So if I level that out, that'll put that more level where it's gonna be doing the same consistency throughout. So you kinda of gotta play with that a little bit, try to get that to do even, go evenly. You see, I lifted it, now I'm getting more of the air up here so it's more even all the way through. That's how you can tell by lifting your box up or down and getting those ripples all flowing the same way. I like to run my box pretty flat, just a little bit of pitch. I like that material to stay up on that box as long as possible before it exits off. I just don't want it flying off there, so I like it up there as long as possible. Give that chance for that gold to settle out. people wear masks you could wear a mask if you felt more comfortable if you don't want to get the valley fever or hunter virus or whatever you know so you could wear a mask I uh, I don't wear a mask I should but I don't if there's any big nuggets slide down they'll get caught like right here in front but this has a heavy, bigger lip right here. And of course, when dry washing, if you're out in the desert, you always need to be checking your piles. A lot of people go metal detecting and they find nuggets in people's dry washing piles. Because yes, they will lose gold. Dry washers ain't the most efficient way of capturing gold. But if that box ain't running great, that, that piece of gold can just actually ride right over the top. Or what might happen is the riffles will fill full of black sand. And once your riffle's full of black sand, it's harder for that gold to get caught down in there, so it'll tend to ride off too. So you should always make sure you're checking your box. I only like to run about 15, 20 minutes when I'm out in the uh, desert before I do me a cleanup. Running good. I should get some gold. I should tell you that I am here in the campground, Gold Fever Adventures Campground. We have outings here a couple times out of the year. We have our great big outing, the New Year's Extravaganza, we call it. We've been doing that for quite a few years. But participants will come out here, spend a week out here where we'll go out in the desert and get a bunch of material, generally. Or we got material piled up right here. We run it through several different machines and, and we process it. And then at the end of the outing, we all share the gold, or I should say, they all share the gold, all the gold that's found. Uh, we provide all the meals. We smoke a pig. We have a band that comes in. A karaoke comes in. We have a party. It's just a lot of fun. If you want more information about that, and it's not too late, you can call the campground. And uh, I'll leave the number down below in the description if you're interested and uh, find out more information about that. But that's a whole lot of fun. see there's a lot of different types of equipment right here we got a pond right here that we fill full of water and then we set all the equipment all the way around the pond so we can process high bankers then we got our uh, panning tub right there is where we do all the cooking at down underneath there we got all the grills and stuff like that there's a clubhouse in there 
where we go in and we can sit there and tables and talk and eat and get out of the weathering and stuff like that. So that's cool in there. One day you guys will have to have a tour of this place. It's running nice and good. How much is left in there? Oh, there's a little bit left. Yeah, I can just feed this and then walk away and let it work its magic. You got this little gold claimer trommel. I've had a lot of problems with this here. This here just oscillates back and forth. It just throws dirt and material all over the place. So I quit using this one until I could fix it. The company told me they were going to send me some pieces to fix it, but of course they never have. So I don't yeah, use this. This here's a javelina trommel. This here has the reverse helix on it. So when you feed the material, it comes back and drops into a gold pan. So you can't overfeed, you know, a reverse helix trommel because you're just start, going to start losing material out of there or, or everything's going to come of back to you. Of course, the Omni Fox trommel, the Gold Fox, that's probably one of the best trommels that's out there. This here is just a high banker. This one here has a tray on it so you can pull out and get stuff in the very top. This is more like a cleanup machine, a little mini high banker. This here's a keen high banker. There's a gold grabber high there's banker. There's a scroll line. There's another key. There's, here's the golden element. This here is kind of cool. has a long right sluice here. on it, and then you can just fill the material there and then just dump it when you need it to. That was kind of a cool machine there. Golden element. Well, you can imagine a lot of people out here, there's generally maybe 20, 25 people is all there is. Maybe a little less, something like that, though. But uh, I had a lot of fun doing this type of stuff and just... You know, it's like a party. It's our New Year's celebration, New Year's extravaganza. It's going to be here in another few months. Coming up close. Coming up soon. Well, you can see the material is about ran through here, about gone. Do a couple of pounds, a couple of little shakes. Get everything down in there, and it's ran. What I'll do now is just give this a chance to continue to run a little bit, clean itself out, maybe a little bit more better. See inside this one's the same thing. It's got the fan in there with the offset. Same on and outing, what we would do is we would take this material over to one of the cleanup machines and then somebody else would uh, run this through a cleanup and, to get the gold out of there. It's like a piece of glass, maybe a piece of broken mirror. Never know what you find in these buckets. Now dry washers only have really three major components to them. One, is gonna be your hopper, your sluice, and then your airflow. That's really all there is to it. The, the hoppers are generally all the same. They got the half inch classifier up on top. Your sluice is basically the same, you know, maybe different riffle designs, but you got your sluice and then you got your air, whether it's a constant air or whether it's from a bellows type. But basically that three components is all a dry washer is. And it is true that gold does separate better in water than air. All right, what I got to do now is I'm going to go pan this stuff out and we'll see if we get gold, how much gold we get. I know there's gold in there. I know there is. We just have to see how much gold there is in there. So you do get better gold recovery with, uh, with the water than you do the air. But gold being 19.3 times heavier than water. It's twice as heavy as anything else in that, in that sand or that dirt. So the gold's going to want to settle out pretty quickly. But in air, you got to put everything in kind of an air suspension to get it to drop through where when water, it just drops out more quicker. And plus water washes all the material, the little rocks and all of that, and can get some of that fine gold where on a dry washer, it can't break up those little dirt clogs or, or wash some of those little bigger rocks that might have little smaller pieces of gold on. So dry washers might only be 90. You know, if you run them right, you might get maybe 90 three i'm going to say pushing it to the max on the dry washer recovery rate but you can run it fairly quickly and out in the desert that's about the only method that you have unless you want to haul a lot of water out there and remember that dry dirt that sucks up a lot of water and out one time but i should probably use a safety pan too I 
I'm going to pan this fairly quickly. And there's a lot of material in here. Gold. I already saw gold. And when you get down to that black sand level, of course, you gotta pan a little slower. Okay, I'll take a little peek at that. Look at that gold showing up. Look at all that gold showing up. Ooh, look at it all. Man, look at all that gold. A couple nice little chunks right there. Yeah, baby, I'll show you closer. I'm gonna spend some more time getting this thing cleaned up, but getting all that black sand out of there, it's a whole nother process, but it'll take me a while to do that. But you can just see all that gold in there. Some nice little chunky pieces too. Imagine everybody getting to share all that gold. And that was only a few bucketfuls. Sometimes you get a lot, sometimes you don't. But it looks pretty, doesn't it? Looks good. Pretty gold. That's nice looking gold. I gotta come over here in the shade, sit down. Oh, I'm in front of the clubhouse now. Whew, you know, that's some nice looking gold. <sighs> Whew. You don't always get that type of gold, but it's sure nice when you do. But anyway, that's dry washing. You know, I don't keep none of my gold. I give it away. So all this gold here will be in bags or something else and it'll be given away too. Uh, anyways, that's dry washing. That was the Keen dry washers. And uh, they're a pretty decent dry washer. There's other manufacturers that make dry washers too, but... That's the Keens. Anyways, whew, I gotta get out of this heat. It's starting to really warm up here. So, hey, I wanna thank you guys coming along, sharing on these adventures. If you guys want to, you know, got any comments or anything, leave me a comment. Tell me what kind of videos you may like to see or that you may want me to, uh, to post, I should say. But anyways, till our paths cross again, I appreciate you guys all uh, stopping by, checking out the channel. If you're not a subscriber, I sure hope you consider subscribing to the channel. Please like, share, subscribe, all that type of cool stuff, as they say. But anyway, till our paths cross again, you guys all get out there. Get yourself some of that nice, shiny little bit of gold. But till then, take care, everybody. Appreciate you guys all watching, and we'll talk to you guys all later. See you, bye. Me. There's gold in them hills and I'm gone